This was uh, the summer of 2011, and I was a researcher at the Peace Innovation Lab at Stanford University, and I was getting into Bitcoin as just kind of global internet financial markets and uh, technology that could be useful. Bitcoin, even from the early days, uh, was pretty obviously a better global trading pair than the dollar, just because only Americans can get dollars, but anyone can get Bitcoin. And at the time, one of the most popular apps for Bitcoin was actually this online drug marketplace called The Silk Road. And when I was researching it to understand, there was no Wikipedia page. So I thought, that's silly. So I went and I grabbed a screenshot and I typed up a paragraph and I started the Wikipedia page. 8.22 p.m. on June 11th, 2011. It says, uh, create a page with The Silk Road is an online exchange that is only accessible via a Tor Hidden Service. All transactions are done with Bitcoins. It was recently written about. Anybody can edit Wikipedia. Uh, all you need to do is just click the edit button on any article that you're on. There's also just a create new page button. When you create your page, it goes live immediately, but someone might nominate it for deletion, which actually happened to this page. It got nominated for deletion because some Wikipedia editors thought that the software marketplace wasn't notable. And then uh, when it exploded in the media firestorm uh, later that year, early 2012, that campaign stopped and people started working on improving the page instead of nominating for deletion. It's actually pretty long now because it doesn't just describe uh, the first drug marketplace, it also describes the FBI investigation in 2013 that shut down the website and arrested Russ Ulbricht. Yeah, well the biggest hurdles were Bitcoin, I think. Okay. So Tor Browser is very easy to install, and uh, it just loads as a URL, not Silk Road anymore because it's gone, but any hidden service. And once you're using the special browser, it's just a normal website. And people would create accounts, just username, password. Gotcha. Just like anything else. Okay. Uh, the real challenge was figuring out, how do I use Bitcoin? What are these addresses? What are these QR codes? And that was what bootstrapped, I think, the local Bitcoin community in most cities, where people are getting together to figure that out together. I think that Bitcoin suffers to this day from the early association with drug markets. It really, it reinforced how intense the libertarian politics were around Bitcoin, that uh, people in the community were thrilled that it was being used for the purchase and sale of drugs, mm -hmm. even though that was always a pretty small percentage of Bitcoin community by transaction volume, it was a huge amount of the early buzz, and I think it really influenced the early culture. And um, we're still struggling with that to this day. Uh, that said, it really got a lot of retail level users learning how to buy and sell Bitcoin and themselves and really bootstrapped the international network of Bitcoin ATMs. But these people were just logging onto a website that felt like eBay, ordering a product, leaving a review. And I think that that was part of this broader cultural conversation that, that resulted in marijuana decriminalization and legalization in I think 10 or 11 states now. And just part of society's changing ideas about that. Mm -hmm. But because Silk Road was global and because it was accessible from everywhere and because it was so easy to use, I'm not surprised that the FBI put together a major investigation and I'm not surprised that they caught the guy. Did you use Silk Road? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, because you said it was easy to use, you know, and I... From what I understand. Right. Okay, <laughs> sure.